Thanks, Rita, and welcome to the Late Look Mall. With Sharuna Saga. Middlesbrough's Andy McDonald is once again officially a Labour MP five months after he was suspended because of a speech he made at a pro Palestine rally in 2023. The party called the words he used deeply offensive, but it has now found that he didn't break any rules. Mr. McDonald says he regrets any pain he caused. But a Teesside Conservative MP has called the decision pathetic. Here's our political editor, Richard Moss. This dates back to a rally that Andy McDonald appeared at in London in October. And it was one part of his speech in particular that got him suspended. He said we will not rest until we have justice, until all people, Israelis and Palestinians, between the river and the sea, can live in peaceful liberty. Heartfelt call for peace in Gaza, he said. But his critics pointed to this phrase between the river and the sea, which has been used in the past to call effectively for the destruction of the state of Israel. Hence, Labour saying the words used were deeply offensive. The party, though, today did reinstate him, saying no internal rules have been broken. In a statement, it said he has been reminded, though, of the importance of being mindful about the language he uses and how it may be interpreted, especially over such an emotive issue. But it's a decision which has been strongly condemned by his neighbour as an MP, Conservative, Simon Clark. And the phrase, saying you want peace, and that means you can use any language you want to make that point, doesn't cut it. He knew his audience, he knew what he was saying, he knew what he was doing, and Keir Starmer knew what he knew what he was doing, which is why he drew the whip. So, I'm afraid, it's either weakness on the part of Keir Starmer, or acceptance that that kind of language is appropriate. Now, Andy McDonald hasn't given an interview, but he has issued a statement saying he was pleased with the outcome. He said it was never his intention to use words that would cause anyone distress or anguish, and he bitterly regrets pain and hurt caused. He says he will not use that phrasing from the river to the sea again. Now, it's part of his future as an MP that he was reinstated. This is an election year. He could not have stood as a Labour candidate in Middlesbrough had his suspension remained in place, and I know he had no intention of standing as an independent. As you've heard, though, it's not satisfied his opponents, and they're unlikely to let this rest for either him or the Labour Party. Richard Moss, BBC Look North, in Westminster. A mother accused of murdering her three-year-old son has been giving evidence in her defence. Christina Robinson, who's 30, admitted that she hit Jualania with a cane at the family home in Ushamore on the day he died because she was following the teachings of the Bible. She pleaded not guilty at Newcastle Crown Court. Mark Denton reports. Well, today, Christina Robinson was asked first of all by her own barrister what happened when her son suffered severe burns in the shower on the 19th of October 2022. She said, my intention was to clean him. The water did get very hot regardless of where the tap was. She said she didn't realise that the water became too hot. But later, she said that she realised the extent of Dolanadia's burns but did not contact the doctor or indeed take him to hospital. She said she followed the black Hebrew Israelite faith which marks its Sabbath on Saturdays. She said she'd heard about using the rod, as she put it, against children in a Bible teaching video. Now on the day Dormania died, she said she'd hit him with a cane because he was messing about with his food. But she was then cross-examined by Richard Wright, KC, for the prosecution. He pointed out that she said in a police interview that she'd always done her best for her son. He said to her, what was your worst life then? He asked over 60 injuries to his body, burns between 15 and 20 percent of his body. Now, Christina Robinson uh, denies both murder and child cruelty, and the case continues. Mark Denton, BBC Look North, Newcastle Crown Court. Parents in rural parts of North Yorkshire are concerned about changes to school bus services following a public consultation which ends next month. Spending on school transport is around £42 million a year, with a potential saving of around £3 million if the County Council decides on measures such as limiting free transport to a child's nearest school. If it's a case of it being the nearest school, our nearest school by road is actually Kirby Stephen. It's 14 miles over a massive hill, often blocks in winter. 
and the detour round by British routes would be about 50 miles, so they'll just miss lots and lots of days of schooling. We're at the end of the line for a model railway club in the village of Rock in Northumberland. It faces eviction from the church that's been its home for 12 years because its hall's been renovated. It's been a haven for the members who've been able to talk about personal issues while playing with their train. We're desperately looking for somewhere to relocate to and to be able to enjoy our hobby again. Having a club in the heart of this rural area makes it much more feasible for those of us who live in rural communities to enjoy our hobby with friends. Some nights we just sit and sometimes we, we sit and talk about men's problems, which is a good thing. You know, it's somewhere where you can do it and you feel safe. Let's hope they find somewhere soon. Time now for the weather. Here's Paul Meany. Good evening. Over the next few days, things stay broadly on the mild side, but it'll be wet and windy at times. A lot of cloud around on the whole overnight tonight. Outbreaks of rain again came in on those uh, southwesterly winds, so the rain heaviest and most frequent in the west. But it will stay mild temperatures no lower than about 6 degrees Celsius. Into tomorrow, and it's a cloudy start with rain at times. The rain will become more patchy in eastern areas, some drier interludes, maybe a little bit of brightness east of the Pennines, but more rain spills in from the southwest later in the day. As you can see some heavy bursts in there as well. Very mild, up to 14 Celsius again. But again, those southwesterly winds quite brisk, quite gusty at times. Friday, we see some cloud and rain eventually becoming drier and brighter after a cold start to the day. Not a great deal of change for Saturday. And that's about it from us for tonight. Steph's here in the morning with the breakfast.